It's the Friday after Thanksgiving, and all through the house, people are groaning and moaning because they ate the grouse. Hi, guys. I don't ask me where that came from. But um, that was in my head, and I had to share it with you. The end of the year celebration has formally begun. Those of you who are watching me have a major conflict between celebration and achieving your goal of losing weight. The last time I spoke to you, I was talking about my belief. And I want to continue that theme. And the reason I want to continue that theme is the more that I think about it, the better I feel. I've maintained my weight for uh, over 20 years now. I've done it in a personal kind of way in that the only way I found once I had reached my goal, and this is personal, it's what I do. I haven't met anyone else who does it the way I do, and that's why I say it's personal, because for me, it's the only way I seem to be able to maintain my weight. You see, I love certain foods, and I like to eat. But if I don't keep my weight off, then speaking with you is not something that I can feel good about. So what do I do? During the work week, I have lunch. It's the only meal I have during the day. When I get home in the evening, I'll have something very light. Uh, some fruit. Every once in a while, I'll have some um, uh, cereal with uh, some uh, milk. I like to read, I like to have some uh, diet soda. Those of you know that one of my favorites is diet Pepsi cherry with lime juice. And if I make it just right, it's a real cherry lime Ricky and uh, it feels good to sip on. On the weekends, because of social obligations, I eat very little during the day, and I look forward to eating with people in the family and others if we're going out. That one meal a day is satisfying because I no longer am hungry. And that's the weird part. I've discovered for me that when I'm needy, I'm also hungry. And when I'm in control, 
I'm not needy. I've also incorporated one of the things that I learned when I was a full-time psychologist. Needy people can never be filled up. It's a bottomless pit. The more you meet the need, the greater the need becomes. It's when I learned that it was a figment of my imagination, everything changed. And I'm going to share with you a story from the past, and I've shared this one before, because it epitomizes what I just said. I was working in this agency with uh, underprivileged people, adults. All of them had some, call it emotional issues. And there were these two women that I was uh, working with, both of them over 45. I came in one day and they were arguing about something. It's not important what it was. And I said to the first one, Betty, I want you to do me a favor. How much money do you have? And she says, well, we were talking. I said, I heard you. How much money do you have? And she said, I have $20. And I said, I want you, Betty, to do me a favor. I want you to take one of those $20 and I want you to give it to Maggie. Well, what do you mean? I only have $20. I said, yes. I want you to take one of your $20 and trust me and give a dollar to Maggie. Because of our relationship, she gave a dollar to Maggie. The following week, the same interaction occurred. I said, Betty, give a dollar to Maggie. And this went on for four weeks. On the fourth week, when I walked in, Betty said, stop, I'm not giving a dollar to Maggie. And I said, I didn't ask you to give anything to Maggie, did I? And she said, no, but, I said, no buts. I want to ask you a question. For the last three weeks, you've only had $19 instead of 20. How did it affect your life? Well, well, what do you mean? I said, well, prior to me asking you to give a dollar to Maggie, you had 20. And after you gave a dollar to Maggie, you only had 19. Well, you know, it's all I... I said, yes, I understand. How did it feel? Any different? And she said, no, it really didn't feel any different. I did what I had to do. Now, I'm going to stop here and not finish the story except to point out one thing. Betty realized that she only thought she was needy. And when I took the time to get her to give to Maggie, in a three-week period of time, she began to realize her neediness came from within and not from the reality. We use food 
for comfort. We feel needy. If we recognize that we can feel this and truly not be needy, then we can learn to comfort ourselves differently. It's now after Thanksgiving. Let's decide what we really want to do. Absolutely, you want to celebrate. Absolutely, you want to have fun. But do you also really want to lose weight? If the answer is yes, let's start following through differently. That's my belief. And uh, I don't like feeling needy. Take care.